Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Good evening, warriors of the Most High. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have a message from the Lord. Oh, boy. But he just changed some things around on me, so. <laughs> Praise God, but it's cool. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. just for you. <laughs> glory, glory. How many of y'all want to be blessed? How many of y'all want to be all so overfilled and overflowed that you can't take it? You get to a point where you're just going to say, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, yes. It's a garment. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse uh, 21. This is what the Holy Spirit said to me just during worship. He said, listen, I'm trying to get something to my people. And I'm getting ready to position people, uh, you know, uh, positional blessings. But he says there are requirements of that. And in verse 21 it says, read it with me. Therefore, if anyone what? Cleanses himself from the what? Ladder. He said people are still living in their past. And they're bringing their past up to the present. And it's contaminating them. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the ladder, he'll be a vessel of honor. How many of y'all want to be a vessel of honor? Okay, he says, sanctified and useful for the master, so you got to be sanctified. If you're contaminated, are you sanctified? No. No. Sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Every what? Good work. What he means by good work, it doesn't mean that you're a good worker. Hello? It's got nothing to do with that. It means good works are the things that God is preparing, good fruits, good works. See, the world looks at your good works as fruits. Amen? Does everybody understand that? Good works. Good works of what? Good works of ministry. Good works of the character of Christ. Good works. So he's saying you must cleanse yourself. The word says he was in Christ as a what? A new creation. Old things have what? Pass away and all things become new. So without cleansing the past, you will not be able to be positionally prospered or blessed. Does everybody get this? Not that God doesn't forsake us. He says he gives you what you need. But don't we want overflow? Amen. The word also says that our barns will overflow. In Psalm 119. In Psalm 119, starting at verse 1. You know, what does the word tell us? Who can abide in the tabernacle of the Most High in his presence? But he has a what? Pure heart. And what? Clean hands. But the word also says, out of the mouth will expose the heart. Amen? Amen. Look at verse 1. It says what? Blessed. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Amen. Blessed are the what? Undefiled in a way. So if you're an individual that's contaminated, are you defiled? Then you can't be sanctified. Does everybody get this? 
and you're going to miss what God is trying to do. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of God. In other words, he's saying who walk according to the word of God. Blessed are those who what? Keep his testimonies. There's a special word in the word testimonies. It's called test. After you get tested, you get monies. <laughs> Amen? Those are rewards if you pass the test. If you don't pass the test, you get test again until you get monies. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies. <laughs> who seek him with the what? Whole heart. Well, listen, if you're not an individual, it's seeking him with the whole heart because your heart ain't pure. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. In other words, they are aligned with the word of God. They believe God's word before anything else. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. That means consistently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with the uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Wow. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1. Testa monies. Some people will stay test, 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 and won't get monies for a while. The only thing they get is groanies. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Glorious. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance what? Look at this. To an inheritance what? Incorruptible in what? So... You're trying to get something from God that is incorruptible and undefiled. If we're corrupted and defiled, can we get it? We can't even touch it. Amen. Now, we talked about this before. What contaminates your spirit? Your mouth. Your tongue contaminates your spirit. The devil cannot contaminate your spirit. Only your tongue can. So what does he do? He gets you to react out of your mouth. That's called sowing in the flesh. Once your spirit is contaminated, what it does is also it causes a stunt in growth so that your soul can, stops converting. Does everybody understand this? Your soul stops converting. It stays stuck. Now you're living out of emotion. You're not seeing correctly. Your imagination is contaminated. Your thoughts. Let me tell you, the devil knows when this happens to an individual and every voice from hell comes. Because they know they can get fed. Now you're prey. But you need to pray. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. How many of y'all know that it's not only reserved in heaven, but you're to be drawing it in so it can be released on earth? But it's still in heaven. It's our responsibility to bring it in. Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Are we in the last time? Amen. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you are grieved by various trials. Let me tell you what these various trials are. They're called reality tests. 
It's a reality test. Why? Watch this. That the genuineness of your faith, your connection, your trust, and your alignment with God, His Word, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is what? It's what? Tested by what? Fire. It's called reality test. May be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And again, we have an inheritance that's undefiled and incorruptible. It's reserved for us in heaven to be released on earth to his earthen vessels of honor. I'm going to say it again to those who the called the vessels of honors through they get released to. Because it's what? Undefiled and not contaminated. We must be tested by fire before release. This is called reality test. It is a test of your hidden inner parts that are corrupted, contaminated, and defiled that portrays a fairy tale reality. It's imposed by secularism, society of humanism. It rejects the true reality of justice and righteousness and a living creator that is a consuming fire. See, you don't know what you are made of until in the fire of the reality test. You don't know what you're made of until you're in the testing. See, God already knows. He's just trying to expose us. Amen? James chapter 1. Reality test. It's time to come out of fairy tale land. See, the world portrays fairy tale land. They have all these movies and flicks and music and all of this stuff that makes everything hunky-dory. Lustful. All kinds of things. But again, it all starts from cutting loose from everything of your past. Everything. Again, when the Lord asked me a simple question, guy, do you want to get off of drugs and alcohol? You don't want a new life. I realized that if I was to say I want a new life, that means I had to let everything go. I had to step away from every area of my old life. Everything. Everything. People, places, and things. Pictures. Everything. Family, children, everything. Why? Because, see, his question to me was, if I wanted a new life, I had to step in his life. If I was not willing to step in his life, now once I step into his life, I can't bring any other life in there with me. Not my life, not my wife's life, not my marriage life, not ministry life, not business life, nothing. Nothing goes in that place. Nothing. Anything that tries to come in or I allow in will remove me out. Does everybody get this? Oh, happy days. Chapter 2. Uh, chapter 1, I'm sorry. Verse, where am I at now? For, uh, where are we at? James 1? Snap. Verse 2. James 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all what? Joy when you fall into various trials, knowing the testing of your reality. <laughs> Produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete and what? Lacking nothing, lacking nothing. Again, we go back to this. Now, I want you to grab hold of something. Is joy a fruit of the flesh or of the spirit? Ah. Wow. So if joy is a fruit of the spirit, the person is in the spirit then, isn't he? So you're either uh, serving the seed of promise or the seed of flesh. 
Remember, trials and tribulations are good for you and me. One of the things we want to do is be on fire for God. Amen? But that fire also tests. And it's testing to find out where our, our reality is. Are we living from the reality plane of God, aligned with his promises of word and covenant? Are we allowing other things to interfere? Are we allowing our past to interfere? Are we allowing the emotional part of our soul to dictate what's going on? How many of y'all know God has the last say? How many of y'all know what he says will come to pass? Hmm. Snap. He says something powerful. He says, if you lack wisdom, ask for it. He gives to all liberally without reproach. It will be given to him. But when you ask, make sure it's in faith and with no doubting whatsoever because it will nullify everything. He says, he who doubts or unbelieves, or has unbelief is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's what? Considered what? Double-minded, unstable in all of his ways. That's what contamination does. It causes a person to become unstable and double-minded. In other words, spirit, flesh, soul. Spirit, flesh, soul. They don't know whether they're coming or going. And I can tell you, it's very, can God trust a person like that? No. Again, joy is a fruit of the Spirit. That means you are responding to the fire not reacting. Amen? God is checking the level of reality. He's checking your faith. He's seeing if you're trusting in him, looking. He's looking for someone who he can manifest through as his vessels of honor. This is not about worldly works. It's about fruits of the Spirit. He's checking out what you think. He knows what you think. He wants to know what you see. He knows what you see. He wants to know what you're going to say. He wants to know really what reality you're still on or if you left the old reality and come into a new one. So, Psalm 119. Oh, happy days. Reality test number 2,500. Verse 65. 119, verse 65. Everybody there? Let's speak it together. You have dealt with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. According to what? Your word. He will deal with you only according to his word. What's he trying to do? He's trying to find out what reality you're in. Are you still living according to his word or according to how you feel? Are you still living according to what his word says or what you see? Are you still living according to his word or your past? Which one are you live into? This is the reality wants to test you on, and you will stay in the testing until you're awakened out of the old reality so you can come into true reality. Some people, I really believe, are going to stay in the fire until they die because they're not willing to give up the old, their way of thinking, and their belief systems. Oh, hallelujah. What does he say in verse 66? Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I what? 
I went what? Astray. If you're still in affliction, it's because you're still astray. Some people will be afflicted all the way till they go home. They'll live in torment, fear, false reality, fairy tale land. Because they haven't allowed the self ex They're more busy examining everyone else and everything else than themselves. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. <laughs> but now I keep your what? Your word. In other words, they went astray from keeping themselves aligned with the word of God. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is a, as fat as what? Grease. But I delight in your law. It is good for me that I had been afflicted. Now, this person learned from their affliction. But some people just don't want to. They'll stay on what they believe and what they think and what they feel and what they see and won't learn. And they'll stay afflicted to the day they go home. Unless it changes. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I may what? Learn your statutes. So affliction is to bring awakening. Does everybody get this? It is to awaken. Awaken from what? A false reality. He says, the law of your mouth is better to me than a thousand of coins, gold, and silver. He deals with according to his word to see if our reality of response is aligned with his word. He wants to make sure that we're not reacting according to the false reality of influence. He knows that we've been strayed from trusting him. We've got to get to the point where we're only trusting him, not anyone or anything or anything else. Afflictions come to awake individuals out of a false reality of presumption, assumption, envy, jealousy, unforgiveness, bitterness. Why? Because it waters the seed of flesh. It does not water the seed of promise. False reality does not water the seed of promise. It waters the seed of the flesh. Until awakened into the alignment of his word of promise, you will stay afflicted into the fire of testing. In 1 Timothy chapter 6. Count it all joy. Again, the first thing we discuss, which is not even in my notes, the Holy Spirit quickened. He gave me those first two scriptures in worship. He said if they don't remove themselves from their past, emotions, imaginations, desires, if they don't remove themselves from the past of all the areas of traumas and fears, they will not be sanctified. They'll miss, and I saw rain coming, and I saw rain blessing on people, and some people, it just passed over. And they thought they were doing a good thing. They thought they were fine. They thought they were okay. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3. Okay, let's get out of here. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. In verse 3, if anyone what? Teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words. 
even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ into the doctrine which accords with godliness. Do you understand what he's saying is, listen, why are you saying all these things? It's not lining up with my word. If it's not lining up with my word, why are you saying these things? Well, then you're contaminating yourself. And you're going astray and you'll be of an affliction. And you'll stay afflicted until you turn. It says here, verse 4, what is the first thing he says? He is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes, arguments over words, which, from which come what? Envy. You know what envy is? Jealousy. Strife. Reviling. Evil suspicions. That's a contaminated imagination. Un useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such, withdraw yourself. Now godliness with contentment is great gain, but we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we cannot carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. In other words, maintaining an attitude of gratitude. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O oh man and woman of God, flee these things and pursue what? Righteousness. Godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. And fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you are also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In other words, he talks about evil suspicions. It's a promoter of fear and presumptuous sin. I'll bring a reality test to you to get you out of, out of it and expose corruption and defilement associated with influenced false reality from your past or even your present that is not aligned with the word of God and, and his trust. Places many individuals in a state of ungratefulness and forgetfulness. You know, if you and I will maintain an attitude of gratitude, these things won't affect us. Amen? Amen? Stop comparing yourself to others. Stop comparing yourself to the world. Stop comparing. You, can need, you want to compare yourself? Compare yourself to Christ. That's where you compare yourself to. Because if you're not living according to him, you've got no right judge of nobody else. 2 Corinthians 10. You know, one of the questions you can always ask yourself, how would Jesus handle the situation? First, you better first ask yourself is, who told you that? In verse 3, for though we walk in the physical realm, we don't war according to the physical realm. Amen? For the weapons of our warfare are not counted, but mighty in God for pulling down what? And what is a stronghold? It is a memory lie. Hmm. So if you touch and agree with a memory, memory lie, can you become contaminated? Yes. Your imagination will become contaminated. Your soul will become, your, but your spirit will not until you speak it. Once you speak it, it comes back to your spirit, man. Casting down what? Arguments. Wow. And every high thing that exalts itself against the what? Knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? It's the word. Yeah. See, the enemy is trying to disalign you with the word of God. If he can do that, he can contaminate you. He can defile you. Then you can't receive an inheritance that's undefiled and not corrupted. 
It says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Many people still don't do that. They just speak whatever they think. They speak whatever they feel. And they wonder why. They're constantly afflicted. And being ready to what? Punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. And what is your obedience? To so grab everything, every thought into captivity. Every thought. Touching unclean, suspicious thoughts. Not taking them into captivity while they talk to you <laughs> and bring you into captivity. They're trying to get you to speak it with your mouth so you can contaminate your spirit and then bring more contamination, more affliction, and not passing the test of reality, but maintaining a false reality, living in fairy tale land. <coughs> the word of God is, <coughs> is failing. Now, I want to share this with you. In other words, in this reality test, it aligns with the word of God Individuals are failing in the life because they're living out of emotion. They're still going by how they feel. How many of y'all know emotions have a belief system? Hello. Assumptionists. Assumptions. Emotional assumptions and decisions not able to respond but react, not willing to cut loose from the co connected past offenses, not willing to cut loose from the past rejections, past traumas, past fears, past belief systems. And there's no way of escape from self until you turn your heart and mind and your tongue so that it aligns with the word of God in Christ. Amen? In James 4. Oh, happy days. Verse 1, James 4, 1. Where do what? Wars and fights come from among you. Let me tell you, this is called the wars of reality. Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? Remember, desires are wants. You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. You ask and do not receive. Because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your, your pleasures, your desires, your wants. Listen, this is powerful. Wars of reality. These are called idols of pride. These things he's talking about is called idols of pride. Not all of your members in your body are free and clean. So anything that's an idol is actually adulterous or adulterers. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit of God dwells in us, yearns what? Jealously. But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will what? He will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, and you sinners, and purify your what? Hearts, you double-minded. People that are unstable are double-minded. They flip on you at any time. This is wars of reality, idols of pride. Not all members of the body are free and clean. It causes double-mindedness, unstability, of reaction, promoting false reality. <clears throat> Do 
You know, when you dream, you believe it's real. The problem is, is people are awake and still believe it's real. Again, you'll know because the word says, I was afflicted when I went, what? Astray. So the fruit of being unaligned with the promises of covenant of God's word is to be what? Afflicted. Does everybody get this? Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3, in verse 7. Remember the last time we gathered, the Holy Spirit said he was going to shake everything. Why? Because we were getting ready to receive something big. He says, I'm going to shake everything in your life. I'm going to shake it all. I'm going to turn you upside down and shake every emotional piece of silver. <laughs> every emotional piece of gold. Every emotional thing he's going to shake until he sees salt. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I didn't say pepper, I said salt. Why, salt stings, doesn't it? It preserves, too, and it causes people to be thirsty. Hebrews 3, verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you will what? Hear his voice. See, when there's contamination, the voice is clouded. You hear more of what you feel and what you think than the voice of God. In fact, you can't even receive conviction sometimes. And the only thing that comes out of you is criticism. And verse 8, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness. How many of all rebellion is influenced by witchcraft? That means they're preying on you. And if they know that you've gone astray and you've got a flawed imagination, a flawed belief system, they know it, man. They're going to feed off of you. And they're going to prey on you. In the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years, therefore I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart. Why? Because they're not aligned with the word of God. Listen, you can quote it and not believe it. And they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Rest? What's the opposite of rest? Torment. Verse 12. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Mm. Unbelief. Dangerous place to be. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ. What? If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. What's your confidence in? The word. The word, what he says. It doesn't matter what man says. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you feel. It doesn't matter what your imagination is. If it's not lined up with the word of God, you'll be brought into the fire and of affliction. And Jesus will turn the flame up until you cook enough to where you finally turn and repent and say, I'm done living this life. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. 
Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt? In other words, didn't every one of us come out of Egypt? Although we weren't led by Moses, but we were led by the Spirit. Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But to those who did not obey his word. So we see that they could not enter because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief in his promises. Not letting go and letting God. Rebellion against his witchcraft and his evil influence to react with suspicion, assumption, doctrines of emotional, of emotion resulting in torment, bondage, and false reality. And there will be continuous affliction until awakened to the alignment with the truth of God's word. We must get to a place where we believe what he says and nothing else. Psalm 23. And this is, there isn't no buts in here. Hallelujah. Psalm 23. Oh, snap it. Everybody okay? I, Daddy's heart is just to get us to that place. See, if you don't have control over it, someone does. I mean, that's the fruit of it. If you don't have control over yourself, your mouth, your reactions, if you don't have control over your Facebook, your phone, your texting, if you don't have control over it, someone does. And it ain't dad. Hello? Verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what? Let's say it again. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what? Say it again. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. One more time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why? Because you know that he's going to make a way no matter which way. As long as you're aligned with his word and promise. Other than that, you're in want. Why? Because you're in affliction. Everyone in affliction is in want. They want to get the heck out of it. <laughs> Verse 2. He makes me lay down in green pastures. Yes, he will. To get your attention. He leads me beside still waters. So you can hear what he's saying. He restores my soul that's been contaminated. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want my way. <laughs> I shall not want which way? My way. I shall not want the way I see things. I shall not want the way I feel things. If they don't align up with the word of God, there's no peace. There's no stillness. There's no escape of emotional soul. No lead out until repent and recognize. Sometimes you don't recognize it until you repent. Does everybody understand that? Because, see, you already know the Holy Spirit's already convicted. He's already telling you, look at man, this ain't right. What you're hearing, what you're seeing, what you're feeling, and what you're saying is not lining up with the Word. The first thing you need to do then, if you can't recognize what it is, repent. Why? It's, you're coming under the blood, and the Holy Spirit will have access to tell you what's up. And if you don't see it, get counsel. Or yes, no, no. Don't go to the world, whatever you're doing. 
And don't go to Facebook and ask for counsel. <laughs> I think some people just do this even while they sleep. <laughs> they're typing their dreams. Or they're texting their dreams. Psalm 34. Dream on. False realities. Oh, happy days. In verse 8, Psalm 34, verse 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who what? Trusts in. If you trust in him, do you trust in his word? Do you trust that he's going to make a way? Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you, who, you his saints. Fear. There is no want to those who what? There is no want to those who what? Fear him. <laughs> the young lions lack and suffer, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Now, trust him no matter what I feel. No matter what I assume, no matter what I think, no matter what my imagination is telling me, Amen? So I don't speak anything I shouldn't. <laughs> Listen, the fear of the Lord is in the area to where there's no reverence to God in the area when you're wrong and don't admit it. Does everybody understand that? There's no reverence to God. And it's not about being right and wrong. It's about offense to God. Amen? And so in this, there's no reverence. And, and, and the fear of the Lord is reverence, respect, and honor, isn't it? So there's no reverence to God, to God when you are wrong and don't admit it. There's no respect to his offense. When there's no fear of God. There's no honor to his promises. When there's no fear of God. Oh, you can say you fear him. But if you don't respect and you don't honor and you don't reverence the things that God has established, then there is no fear of God. None. Remember in the Old Testament, people used to die on the spot. When children were rebellious, they used to put them out and stone them to death. Thank God for Jesus. We'd have never made it. Jeez. But there's a time to grow and mature. See, there's a time when you're a baby in Christ, and then you become adolescent and an adult, or now you're more, much is given, much is what? Accountable and required. Amen. You can't keep doing the same things that you were doing four or five years ago, six or eight or ten or twenty. You can't keep saying the same things and doing the same thing. You'll stay in the fire. Living in the reality of the soulish self is a terrible place to be. The test is on. And the furnace is on. 1 Corinthians 2. Oh, happy days. Is everybody okay? I believe the Lord is trying to bring the fear of God here. Because it's been compromised. 
In verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Some people still ain't seeing and hearing yet. Why? Because God has revealed them to us through his spirit, but because there's two things that have happened. The Bible says, make no place for the devil and don't grieve the Holy Spirit. So when there's a react, there's a grieve, and there's an open place. Yes, the deep things of God. So what happens? The person still can't see correctly or hear correctly. Can't interpret things correctly. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him, even so no one knows the things of God except for what? The spirit of God. It says the, the anointing that you and I have guides us to all truth. Well, why isn't, why isn't there understanding and truth then? Because of contamination. Always, always learning. But never able to grow, really. Why? Because it stunts a person. The soul can no longer be converted when the spirit is contaminated. And a person contaminates themselves out of their own tongue. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Eyes will not see, ears will not hear. Rejecting counsel, the Holy Spirit, which leads them into all truth. Also leads us into true reality. But the rejection brings a false reality. God will test what you see and God will test what you hear. One of the things that people don't realize is that you need to cleanse your imagination with the blood of Jesus. Repent for all sins of your imagination because that's where you see out of. He's not talking about physical sight. He's talking about most of the time people talk and, and, and things of their imagination window because that's what they're seeing out of. That's where your thought imagination is. Amen? I mean, the devil starts painting a picture, doesn't he? Well, when he paints that picture, instead of people erasing it, they color it. And then they, they start believing it. They turn it into a puzzle. And it becomes a false reality, false perception, false belief system, and they become unstable. Ephesians 1. Oh, yes. Ephesians chapter 1. One, verse 15. Reality test. Everybody knew you were going to get tested. We talked about it when? Uh, last week? What's today? Tuesday? Sunday, a couple days ago. Lord said he was going to test us all. You're stepping into the trial. Yes, we should be living in the fire, but it should be the fire of God with, you know, we should be on fire, hot. Not in trials all the time. <laughs> Verse 15, Ephesians chapter 1. I mean, yeah, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, I also, after heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And where is his knowledge? The word. Now look at this. Are you ready for this? that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Now, what is the eyes of your understanding? Your imagination. That you may know what is the hope of his calling, 
What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in his saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places? Again, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. It is your imagination. Open to see the true reality of every circumstance, situation, and trial. Ephesians 5. In verse 1. See, when traumas come and things come in our challenges come in our life the enemy likes to plant a picture especially when things aren't going the way you expect them to go boy does he like to plant a picture verse 1 therefore be imitators of God okay as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, nor uh, uh, which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks, for this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetousness who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words or imaginations. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Amen? Or to be imitators of God. In other words, responders, not reactors. Some people are like nuclear reactors. Why? Because we're to align ourselves with the promises of God's word. First Peter chapter 5, and I'm closing here. First Peter 5. Praise God. Reality test. I think the body of Christ is in a big reality test right now. Verse 5, let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, submit to what? Yourselves to your elders. That's called respect. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. That's called honor. And be clothed with what? Humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Hello, that's the plan, isn't it? Plan of escape. Some of us need a plan of escape from the affliction, from the fiery trials. But again, if there's not submission, if there's not respect, if there's not reverence and honor, that's the fear of the Lord, you just have to cook for a while. Verse 6, therefore what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, be alert, be vigilant, be consistent because the price is cooperation. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. I don't understand why people don't get this. A roaring lion means he's going to press you with every word and every picture, like, see that every word will paint a picture. Seeking whom he may devour. It says resist him. Resist him. Steadfast, consistent, in the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But not everyone's going to put up with it. 
Some people just let the enemy speak to them and then they just say whatever they see and feel and hear and whatever. Taking no thought into captivity. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you what? How many of y'all love to suffer? Woohoo! Why? Because what's suffering going to bring? After you suffer a while, it's going to what? Perfect, establish, strengthen, and do what? Settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Thank you for the reality test that we may come out of foolishness. And come in a line with the word of your promise and covenant where true reality is. Lord, we repent for every area where we have touched and agree with false reality, with the voice of the stranger, with false imaginations, with accusations and criticism. In every area, sin of transgression and iniquity of our lives, wash us with the blood of Christ, heal us with the stripes of Jesus, and continue to fill us and dress us and possess us with your presence and anointing so we will see what you want us to see. We will hear what you want us to hear. We will speak what you want us to speak. And we will follow wherever you want us to go in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God, be blessed, and stay dressed with the glory.